Thank you, Doug. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to talk about turbocharging McEwen Mining by creating the next copper unicorn. And there's a cautionary statement. You've seen many of these. Uh, there are three people, or two other people with me today. Stefan Spears at the back of the room. He's handing out the information of a brochure. And Michael Metting, who is, uh, as you heard, Vice President, General Manager of McEwen Copper. Stefan is Vice President of Corporate Development. So McEwen Mining has assets spread between North and South America. The ones in colored orange are in McEwen Copper. McEwen Mining owns 68% of McEwen Copper. Uh, the other properties, uh, the Fox Complex is in Timmins. We own 100% of that. Gold Bar is Nevada. We own 100% of it. Uh, San Jose is in southern Argentina, operated by Hoss Shield Mining. We have a 49% interest. And in Mexico, uh, we have a mine, El Gallo, that's on residual leach, but we have a feasibility study there will, that will extend its life by about 10 years. Uh, we're guiding 150,000 ounces of uh, production, um, gold equivalent, that's gold and silver, for this year. And just at the end of August, we completed an $82 million financing for McEwen Copper. Um, my investment in the company has gone up, a reflection of my confidence in the future. I now have $220 million invested in McEwen Copper and McEwen Mining. Um, that's broken down 40 million in debt that I've advanced to McEwen Mining, 140 million in McEwen Mining shares, and $40 million in McEwen Copper. Um, my interest in McEwen Mining is 17%, and I take a dollar a year and have so for the last 15 years. Um, our share price uh, doesn't reflect that confidence. <laughs> it's been very ugly since um, 2018. We had floods, fires at one of our operations, COVID shortage, a write down of resources, everything you would think you would hope would never happen. Right now I'm, I'm quite encouraged because We've broken our 20-day moving average. We've broke it. We're at our 50-day moving average. And I think we have a good shot at going through the 100-day moving average. So technically, it looks good. In the first half of this year, we improved our treasury, our gold, and silver. And the first quarter was uh, in fact affected by COVID and shortage of manpower. But second quarter stabilized and make, made up the difference. And our costs are, per ounce are decreasing. We're heavy. Uh, spender on exploration, uh, believing that that generates the future. And uh, at our Fox Complex, which is Timmins, uh, we have a nine-year growth profile there with a PEA. In Mexico, the Phoenix Project will give another 10 years. We're just negotiating some equipment purchase there. And at Gold Bar, which is in Nevada, we're opening up a, a new part of the deposit, Gold Bar South, that will be in production in the fourth quarter. Some selected financials consolidated $48 million, um, $65 million in debt, and none of that comes due until August, and $40 million of that. Um, I'm quite flexible on the maturity date. Uh, our production, I'm just showing the first half and the second quarter, just showing uh, that we increased production in the second half, and our costs of production were starting to come down in the right direction. The, pro the enterprises are making money, um, but we report losses because of our exploration expenditures, both on our gold and silver projects, but also we consolidate McEwen Copper. And we will continue to report losses for the next several years as we push uh, McEwen Copper forward. It doesn't, but we will have positive cash flow. So at the end of August, um, we completed this $82 million financing. Rio Tinto, their um, technology arm came in, uh, the Newton technology, and they made a $25 million investment. And a week later, uh, their exploration arm, Kennecott Copper, came in and uh, committed to spend $18 million to earn a 60% interest in our Nevada property. So what is all, all of this worth? Um, Los Azulas is going to be the big driver. This is a property that will produce well into the 22nd century, I'm quite sure. Um, we're looking to power it by the sun, all renewable energy, and uh, 
if you look at it, it could probably, the amount of copper coming out of here would be the equivalent of two and a half times what Tesla needs for its cars every year. So there are two large copper projects in uh, San Juan province besides ourselves. Well, actually, there are a couple of others too, but these two have values. Um, Jose Maria was purchased by Lundin Mining for 485 million earlier this year. And Philo had some amazing drill holes and has a current market value of a billion and a half. If you look at those, as I said, they're all, we're all in the same province. We're at a lower altitude. We're at 3,100 to 3,600 meters, and they're at four and 5,000 meters. So there's glacier, potential glacier issues, potential <coughs> definitely human productivity and machine efficiency that is lost as you go higher. In terms of the published resources, we're uh, quite a bit larger. And in terms of the copper grade, we're higher as well. Um, we're closer to infrastructure um, in terms of the power grid and highways. Our development stage is earlier. We're going to come out with an updated PEA in the uh, first quarter of this year, next year and uh, IPO in the uh, first half. Goldman Sachs did a study of undeveloped copper projects around the world and looked at their cost profile. We were in the lowest cost quartile, and Jose Maria was in the highest cost quartile. So you have values 1.5 billion, 500 million. And looking at McEwen Mining, I think it's, a, it's the sum of its parts. So here we have, we took it, looked at Los Azulis, said um, the low end of the valuation of three and a quarter, and we arrived at that by taking the 485 million, discounting it by 50% because it was a public company and a premium was paid, multiplying it by our 68% interest, and dividing it by our fully diluted shares of 51 million, and we get a value of $3.24 US. We're currently trading at 350. When you look at uh, doing the same thing to Philo, uh, we have a $20 value. Remember, we're bigger, higher grade, lower elevation, closer to infrastructure. Um, Elder Creek is our second property in McEwen Mining. It's in Nevada, in the Battle Mountain Cortez trend, right next door to Marigold, um, Phoenix, and Lone Tree. Um, it has a value of about 59 cents a share. We have a royalty portfolio of five royalties, a royalty of one and a quarter percent on Las Azulas and on Elder Creek, and then around Cerro Negro, two percent royalty down in Argentina and some properties in Nevada that we optioned out. Our gold and silver properties, we looked at five producers that their um, enterprise value divided by their gold equivalent ounces and saw that they were, they're smaller than us, but they're trading at 40% higher valuation. So we just grossed that up. That comes up to a $5 value and then discounted it at the low end for $2 and at the high end, $4. So we're looking at better than $6 a share at the low end and $25 on the high end. And as I said, um, we're trading just above the uh, copper value in the company. So you get the gold for free on 150,000 ounces. Um, the ownership, 68% McEwen Mining. I own 15% of McEwen Copper. That I, um, Rio's in there for 10%. An Australian group, the Victor Smorgan Group, is in for four, and individual investors for three. And I'll pass it over to Michael now to talk about Los Azulas. Thank you so much, Rob. So it's a pleasure uh, being able to talk about the project. Um, the project is located in, in San Juan. San Juan um, to Argentina is the same as Nevada to the US. It's um, consistently ranked as a highly attractive um, area for investment uh, in South America. This um, San Juan is ranked higher than um, than Chile, Peru in the latest Fraser uh, Institute report. What is interesting in, in San Juan is um, that uh, I've spent there uh, 10 years of my life. So my, two of my daughters were born there. I worked for Barry Gold Corporation for, um, for seven years. 
and was the CFO for all their uh, assets, Veladero, um, the Argentinian part of Pascualama, all the exploration companies, 10 in total. So um, since I have little time, Rob already mentioned, um, this is a top 10 undeveloped copper project. We are top four, not owned by a major. Um, Rob also mentioned that um, we are in the lowest cost quarter, according to Goldman Sachs. There are two other projects uh, on this list. One is Rosemaria and the other is El Pachon. El Pachon is also top 10, but um, again, they're in the highest cost quarter. Um, this is the 2017 uh, PA economics that we're currently updating. Um, we are going to work on a, on a different flow sheet. Um, that's why we're also happy that Rio Tinto came in, because we think that uh, a good opportunity would be uh, starting with a smaller project, smaller meaning uh, size of Veladero, meaning about 100,000 tons per day operation, about 100,000 tons um, per year copper production, cathode production. Um, this, is, this is a quick summary on, on how the project looks like. At the moment, we have 962 million at 0.48% indicated and 2.7 billion at 0.33% uh, um, in inferred. What is interesting to see here is that um, of the holes that we drilled, the majority of the holes are about 300 meter deep. 13% um, uh, ended in mineralization. And what I'm going to show you real quick here is our drilling. Let's see how quickly this updates. So what you see here is um, in the legion, you see uh, in colors um, the percentage of copper. Um, this is uh, the 36 uh, year pitch shell. And what you see here is a lot of copper below the pitch shell. So again, what is interesting, this is already a very big project and has the possibility to be significantly larger. This is a multi-generational uh, mine. It's a mine for the 22nd century. Um, so where are we located? Um, we are located, as uh, Rob already said, close to infrastructure. This is the province of San Juan. Uh, this is the Los Azules project. This is 70 kilometers. In orange, this, you see power lines. This is a 500 kV line, 70 kilometers away. Uh, just for your information here, you have um, uh, Filo and Rosemaria. This is 400 kilometers. This to the power line is 257 kilometers. So we have the opportunity to export through Chile, Coquimbo, or we can ship to San Juan and then through Mendoza up to, um, to the Atlantic. Um, that are different options that we have. Uh, when we sell copper cathodes, but keep in mind that Argentina is, indus uh, is an industrialized country with a big um, automotive industry. They have lots of lithium projects. There may be the possibility to actually sell uh, some part of the cathode production in Argentina. So having said this, um, what comes, what comes uh, additionally? What is the upside opportunity? This is a Titan 24 geophysical survey that we did, and uh, what you see here is um, resistivity, and the warmer colors are more conducive, and we have done some drilling in the past. We have seen that uh, higher conductivity corresponded in, uh, in a lot of uh, cases with higher mineralization. That is a hole uh, that we drilled in the past. It's about 250 meters from the center of the deposit that we had to cut short because we lost the hole, but uh, it ended at 656 meters. Uh, we had 269 meters with 0.5% copper and 45 uh, meters at 0.95% copper. So main message, there's a huge opportunity here yeah, going forward. So thank you very much. And if there are questions, I'm going to take that now. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good question. So San Juan is a province that is mining friendly. Um, that's a province where um, the governor, as well as the mining minister, are actually actively pushing us forward to do uh, permitting work. We have started with Night Salt to do um, our uh, environmental permit application. We think that um, if all goes well, and we uh, have all the relevant data in place that um, maybe by June um, next year, we can file for the permit. Uh, usually a permit, for example, the Rosmaria permit took one year um, once the permit was filed uh, to be approved. As an example, a more complex um, would be Pachon. Uh, the government of San Juan said they, they will take about two years to revise the permit application.
You know, we think we are in a very good spot. We don't have any kind of significant issues to deal with, and we have a lot of baseline data available. Thank you, Michael. Great. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Yeah.